This is Wardlow from AEW, and you're watching The Joe Cronin Show. A wrestling podcast with attitude. What's going on, everybody? Keith Lee responds to fans about the music. I basically said this the other day. When, when talking about this yesterday, I said probably the reason why the musics are changing is because CFO left the company and WWE doesn't want to pay them. And guess what? It turns out that is, in fact, the case. Not surprising. So a lot of people have been, you know, grumbling about this and complaining and so much that, you know, Keith Lee had to respond to it. So he, he responded to it. He said, be patient. Let me handle it, basically. Um, in fact, I can get his exact uh, quote. I mean, but I, I think one of the biggest responses to that has been that, yeah, but dude, what about your attire? What's going on with your ring attire? You know what I mean? That's the big problem. He said, we all know he said this yesterday, so. But, uh, you know, he came out and said, music is out of my hands, period. Leave it be. I'll sort it out later. I don't know what that means. I mean, I know what it means, but what? Um, so anyway, obviously I went on a big rant about this the other day. And then I had, there was many people that said, oh, come on, Joe, you know, you're being ridiculous. You're going to say this guy's ruined all because of his music and stuff. And it's like, well, no, I'm not saying he's ruined because of the music. I'm saying he's, he may be ruined because basically so many others have been ruined. And it always starts with this, when they become ruined. Uh, it's it's when you basically sniff that you can tell Vince McMahon doesn't know what he's doing with people. Like Ricochet. Ricochet started out great. He was amazing in NXT. He was great as Prince Puma and all these other things. And then he comes up into the main roster and he's great. But he's great because they basically just bring him up as Ricochet, as the guy he was in NXT. But the minute Vince McMahon starts playing games with bullet sounds at the beginning, taking away the cool light that comes down when he puts his hand up, which makes it, I don't know why, but that part of the entrance gets me so hyped up. And that hype carries through the match. That's why some wrestlers are great just because of their entrance music. Their entrance music hypes you up and you're like, oh my God, here we go. Like, I'm super hyped up. And then even if the match isn't off to the best start, you're still kind of hyped from the entrance. And, you know, things get going and things are doing well and then if the match starts kicking in too then you got that fire and then you hear the music again at the end and man that's something that kind of snowballs into excitement and i it's it's keith lee looks ridiculous right so i mean it can't be stated enough i have a photo here of keith lee that i, I showed the other day that we used as the example because the guy just doesn't look right he looks ridiculous and i mean this is the this is the image so forget the music i don't even care as much it's this. Instead of having no shirt, he's got a shirt. And instead of having cool pants, he's got a dress. This looks goofy. So there's nothing you can do to tell me. So you can say, oh, the music really ruins him, Joe. Yeah, it does, because go look at the comments. The music ruins him for about 40% of his fans. Go look at the comments. It's not me, just me saying it. Who cares if just Joe says, oh, he's ruined for me because of the music. Well, who cares? Problem is, half the fans are saying it. That's the problem. And on top of that, look at this. Looks like a cheerleader. Anyway, we've already beaten that horse to the ground. I love Keith Lee. I don't I don't like love him like as far as promo. I don't really like his promo and, and some of the other things, but I, I like his in-ring work a lot. And that's what I like about Keith Lee, that he's a big guy that can move the way he does, although... Vince McMahon likes to shut that down, like Ryback said. Ryback even said it, although Ryback lies about everything, so it's hard to figure out if that's even true. But, you know, assuming Ryback isn't lying, which is uh, always a possibility with Ryback, you know, I don't know. <laughs> he might be lying, so you never know Ryback. Um, ratings? Oh, my God, the ratings are up uh, after SummerSlam. Amazing. Not really. They're, at, they're up every single time after SummerSlam, so it doesn't matter. By the way, this is a good time to hit that like button down below if you'd like to. Let's see if we can get uh, 69 likes because I'm sick. And uh, subscribe if you're new to the channel. I'll have daily wrestling videos, news reports, comments, 
What do you guys have to say about this? I'm going to respond to comments this week. Love to hear your comments down below. I'm not done, by the way. Don't click off the video because I ain't done, stupids. Okay? I ain't done. So the ratings going up after SummerSlam, it doesn't matter worth a damn because they always go up after SummerSlam. Big whoop. They'll go down next week and the week after that. Hit me up with the raw ratings uh, the week after this week. Let me know what they are. We'll figure out what they are. Vince McMahon ripped up the script. Uh, ripped up the script. Script, script up the ripped. Uh, a few hours or, or the day of Raw, it's being said. That's been said a million times over. A uh, Just a discombobulated uh, Raw. Just a nightmare of a Raw the other night, which explains why things were, I guess, like, they advertised all these things, sort of, and then they happened, but they happened, like, dumbly. And basically, it was very basic. So to me, it was it was as safe as could be. It sounds like because maybe there were there were, there were certain directions or sharper directions that Raw was going to take, and potentially, whatever reason Vince didn't like that, he ripped up the script. Well, so we got that kind of lackadaisical, basic Raw. That's why maybe Keith Lee just was so plain on the mic. But then uh, dressed like a cheerleader and had different music, probably because of CFO. So, oh, we didn't really get into that too much. But CFO left the company about uh, two years ago now, almost. And we did. Oh, we said when that happened, that is a horrible loss for WWE because Jim Johnston always wrote the music for WWE, and he he was phenomenal. We all know this from Stone Cold to Gold Dust um, to just The Undertaker and countless themes that Jim Johnston wrote. You know, even some that he co-wrote with Jimmy Hart, you know, and things like that. Jim Johnson was responsible for almost all the music that we love so much. But CFO brought a fresh, new, modern-day vibe to the music, such as Shinsuke Nakamura, Bobby Roode, you know, and countless others. Countless others. All the good NXT music came from CFO, such as Keith Lee's... Um, bask in his glory that those type of things um and so wwe apparently was paying cfo royalties for the songs for whatever reason so they didn't want to play pay royalties anymore so that's why they've gotten rid of so many of the different music that they had but it's all the really good music so now WWE has a generic team, I guess, working on music. WWE needs to shut up and go pay CFO. I mean, WWE doesn't... Not, not only does WWE need to pay CFO, WWE needs to rehire CFO. I don't care if you have to fire somebody. Shh, like, sure up some money. Because these guys wrote monstrous themes for your wrestlers. And now, every time a wrestler debuts, it feels like they just have generic music now. All the specialness of NXT music is gone. Because you lost CFO. It's really bad. Go get CFO back. They, For some reason, they were able to delve in and touch in on, on, on wrestlers and what the sound should be and what it should sound like. These guys were a massive, massive asset to you. And I believe, I just think it's a shame. Now you have no Jim Johnston anymore, and now no CFO. I don't even know who's in charge of the music now, but it sounds like generic music number seven every time from everybody almost. Undisputed. I think that was CFO too. Just Kevin Owens, undisputed. It's all undisputed. And it all had a ring to it and a sound to it that was good. Now now the music sounds terrible. You, you, need, you need to pay these guys. I'm, I'm dead serious. I, you're on drugs. Like, music is so important. And these guys were nailing it. And you let them go? That's disgusting. So now they're going to go and grab all the good music and throw it away so we don't, so they don't have to pay royalties to CFO. Why did they even give royalties? Why not just pay them one time for all the music? If they have to pay them more, so what? At least you know you're done with it. You owe them, You own the music. There's no royalties, or there's barely any royalties. Why Why are you so worried about paying the royalties anyway? You should just look at it as... I mean... Oh, my God. I can't even believe it, man. We need to reach out to CFO. 
Tonight is the NXT review, and tomorrow is the AEW review, as tomorrow is AEW. Tonight is NXT. We'll be live with the NXT review tonight. I hope you guys join me for that. Right now, if you haven't heard it, the second episode of Off the Rails with Jesse and Drew is up on Patreon right now. Plus, I've got a note to self coming as well for you, and a few other things this week, including Monica and Leah's uh, debut podcast coming sometime this week and maybe next week, depending on what they uh, come up with. And uh, But I'll be on there. Corrupted podcast Saturday night, and I'll see you guys tonight. Tonight, live! After NXT, I will be live tonight. So we'll see you that uh, for that, the NXT review tonight. You'll get an alert on Patreon, so if you get no alert on YouTube, which you probably won't, ring that bell down below, ring that sub button, so you get some alerts. And if you really want to make sure you get an alert, become a patron for at least $1 a month. That's 12 bucks a year. If you come here enough, it should be worth it to you. Um, but it's tough times right now, so I understand. But uh, hopefully you guys join the other 342 patrons on Patreon, and you guys will get the alerts, you'll get notified, and you'll get 30 hours of bonus content not heard on YouTube. Now, to have some fun with you, if you guys want to have some fun, earlier today, if you're bored and you're at home and you have a park down the street or you have a backyard that's big enough, I went and I, and I bought this pitching machine so I could get some exercise in the backyard. Boom! I hit that into the street, brother. Gone. That was a huge hit. Hundred something yards. Wiffle ball gone. gone. Almost hit the damn birds up there. Now, this pitching machine is only $30. $30. Gone. Take a look at it. 30 bucks. Look at this. Boom! Goodbye, biatch! Gone. <laughs> a lot of people on Twitter were asking me, like, damn, man, how much is that thing? Like, that must be a lot of money. No. 30 bucks, boys and girls. 30 bucks. And if you guys want to get it, I included the link and my link with the special price down below to get it on Amazon. Because we're all bored and we're all stuck inside with COVID stuff. This pitching machine's sick. I recommend getting the additional balls for it. I always recommend getting additional balls. It's supposed to be for kids, but hey, you put it on a chair, or you can even, it, it goes backwards and forwards so you can have a lower pitch and stuff. Just something where you can smash the balls around. I love it. Anyway, link for that down below. Takes you to Amazon, gives you the special price. I'm Joe Cronin, and I'll see you tonight for the NXT review. Leave it in the comments for me. And if you're not going to Amazon to check out that pitching machine, well, here's some other videos popping up that you might have missed. Biatch!